As for me, in justice, I shall behold your face. I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Good morning to you all. In this morning's Mass, we pray for the souls of Michael and Christine Kennedy. We also remember Mary Bridget, who lies before us. To prepare our hearts and minds to offer these sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins and beg God to forgive us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us all our sins and lead all of us to eternal life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are counted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. In the reign of Ahaz, son of Jotham, son of Uzziah, king of Judah, Rezon, the king of Atham, went up against Jerusalem with Pekah, son of Remaliah, king of Israel, to lay siege to it, but he was unable to capture it. The news was brought to the house of David. Aram, they said, has reached Ephraim. Then, then the heart of the, of the king and the hearts of the people shuddered as the trees of the forest shudder in front of the wind. The Lord said to Isaiah, Go with your son, Sheh Jazhab, and meet Ahaz at the end of the conduit of the upper pool on the Fuller's Field Road and say to him, Pay attention, keep calm, have no fear. Do not let your heart sink. Because of these two smoldering stumps of firebrands, or because Aaron, Ephraim, and the son of Remaliah have plotted to ruin you, and have said, Let us invade Judah and terrorize it and seize it for ourselves and set up a king there, the son of Tabil. The Lord says this, it shall not come true, it shall not be. The capital of Aram is Damascus, the head of Damascus, Rezan, the capital of Ephraim, Samaria, the head of Samaria, the son of Ramaliah. Six or five years more, and shattered Ephraim shall no longer be a people. But if you do not stand by me, you do not stand at all. The word of the Lord. God upholds his city forever. God upholds his city forever. The Lord is great and worthy to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain rises in beauty, the joy of all the earth. God upholds his city forever. Mount Zion, true pole of the earth, the great king's city, 
God, in the midst of his citadels, has shown himself its stronghold. For the kings assembled together, together they advanced. They saw, at once they were astounded, dismayed, they fled in fear. A trembling seized them there like the pangs of birth, or as the east wind destroys the ships of Tarshish. Let us stand to greet the gospel. Hallelujah. Observe your law to keep it with my heart. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to reproach the towns in which most of his miracles had been worked because they refused to repent. Alas for you, Chorazin! Alas for you, Bethsaida! For if the miracles done in you had been done in Ty and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. And still, I tell you that it will not go as hard on Judgment Day with Tyre and Sidon as with you. And as for you, Capano, did you want to be exalted as high as heaven? You shall be thrown down to hell. For if the miracles done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have been standing yet. And still I tell you, it will not go as hard with the land of Sodom on Judgment Day as with you. The Gospel of the Lord. We start our reflection today from the first reading that we took from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 7. The verse 4, the prophet reminded the king, Ahaz. He says that, pay attention, keep calm, have no fear, do not let your heart sink. So these are assuring words for us as well. Pay attention, keep calm, have no fear, do not let your heart sink. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 4. Why would God even send the prophet Isaiah to give these words of assurance to him? Why? Because... Israel in the north, with its capital Samaria, and then Syria, with its capital Damascus, initially wanted the southern kingdom, Judah, to make alliance with them so that they will, find, they will fight a common enemy who is Assyria. But Judah did not do that. Instead, they sought alliance directly with Assyria even to the extent that the king even eventually would bribe the king of Assyria with vessels from the house of God. And even eventually we even copy the way they worshipped. He would send one of the priests, Uzziah, to go and see the pagan altar and come and build a replica of it in Jerusalem. And so the king Ahaz was in this sort of trouble. Now his immediate neighbor, Israel, who were their, almost their brothers, have teamed up with Syria and they are coming to fight them. 
So they got so scared. And so God will send a prophet to him. Pay attention. Keep calm. Do not be afraid. You know, at times when uh, you have enemy from within, at times says it's more hurtful than when enemy is from without. When a friend hurts you, it is painful. But when your own sibling hurts you, it pierces the heart. And we found it in the life and the relationship between the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. But in, even in the midst of all these tensions and troubles, God still sent his prophet to remind the king that keep calm, do not let your heart sink, do not be afraid. Which tensions do we also find ourselves in? That these consoling words come at the appropriate time to assure us of God's constant care for us. That we need not be afraid because he's with us. And even as the prophet carries on to, to give these words, the prophet was directed to take his son, Shia Yashu. His name means the remnant shall return. So the name was so symbolic that they should not be afraid. They will not be exterminated forever because the remnant, those who remain faithful, shall surely return, shall surely live. So these are the consoling words from the first reading for us. We should pay attention, keep calm, and do not let your heart sing. Have no fear. In the gospel, we heard of Jesus who was almost like having a holy anger, disappointed with three cities, Chorazin and Bethsaida. Chorazin, we don't hear a lot about them. But Bethsaida, at least we know that that was the hometown of Simon Peter and then Andrew. And probably Jesus might have worked a lot of miracles. But instead of the people re repenting, they rather became indifferent and refused. And when he came to Capernaum, he even had more stronger words. And you, Capernaum, you want to be elevated. You'll be thrown down to hell. And why would, be, why would Jesus be so angry with Capernaum? Why? Because Capernaum became the capital of Jesus' ministry. We remember the episode of Jesus in Nazareth, Luke chapter 4, when he proclaimed that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has sent me to bring good tidings to the poor and all that. And then he will conclude by saying that this scripture is being fulfilled in your hearing. The people wanted to kill him. Jesus will run away from Nazareth and then will pitch his camp in Capernaum. There he worked a lot of miracles. There Simon Peter and the mother-in-law were staying. So whenever Jesus went round, he would come back to Capernaum. He did a lot of teachings there. And even fast forward, when we go to John Gospel chapter 6, the discourse on Jesus, the bread of life, the long theology of the Holy Eucharist that Jesus gave, he gave in Capernaum, and still the people did not repent, and Jesus Christ predicted their future. My dear friends, once we have privileges, we should also know that we have responsibilities. We Catholics, we have been given a lot. Just like Capernaum, we have been given a lot. We have the Holy Bible to guide us. We have the Holy Mass every day that God feeds us with the body and blood of Christ. We have Mary, the mother of the Lord, to pray with us and intercede for us. We have the saints praying with us. We have the sacraments that we have access to. What is our response to God's love? Are we indifferent? Or that we take our responsibility seriously because of the privileges we receive? May God not be overly disappointed with us. May he continue to reassure us with his words that we should not be afraid we should keep calm we should pay attention why because he will be with us today we are asking that he will strengthen us no matter the situation the messages we have received no matter the disappointing news we have received that our heart will not sink because we have a god who will never forgets us through this mass may god help us 
as we continue to remain confident in his word. Amen. Shall we please stand and pray? We pray in thanksgiving to God for the gift of a new day, for the gift of our faith, and for the gift of this meeting with him. Lord, hear us. We pray for the intention of this Mass, for the souls of Michael and Christine Kennedy, and for the soul of Mary Bridget, who lies before us, we ask that God will have mercy on them. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. May the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who are sick. And for those who have done some tests, blood tests, and awaiting results, and their hearts are sinking, we pray for those who check on their neighbors, their family members, and do not receive positive news. We pray that God will continue to assure you of his presence and of his victory. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who feel so down and disappointed to the point of even giving up on God and giving up on the church. We pray that God will visit them at the point of their need. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who have asked us to pray for them. We pray especially for seminarians who are striving with their vocation that they will not give up, that they will persevere and embrace the call God is giving them, and for all those discerning that they will be guided by the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, in the silence of our hearts, let us pray presenting all the other intentions to our Heavenly Father. We make all our prayer through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. The fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, O Lord, may we be accepted by you that our sacrifice this day may be pleasing to you. Lord, I am you this and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is self your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the class of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Alan our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph as spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by his divine teaching, this morning we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold, he who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are you all invited to his supper. May the body of Christ keep all of us safe for eternal life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him, says the Lord.
Let us pray. Having consumed this gift, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. After Mass, we'll carry on with our rosary. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go trusting in the Lord. Our Mass is ended. Wish you a blessed day.